My parents are living in this house, so you need to go back to your parents' place. What? I was taken aback by my husband's sudden words, yet my husband seemed to think he was making perfect sense. What now? You got complaints? Don't argue with what I'm saying. I'm totally okay with divorcing you, you know, he began to assert. Lately, he'd been cold to me, and I had my own grievances. I had been considering divorce as well, but I didn't think being kicked out of the house was fair. I mean, I'm the only one paying the $1,800 for the living expenses. I wonder if he even remembers that. As I stared at him in disbelief, he lost his patience and snapped, Get out of this house already. If you're here, my parents won't feel comfortable coming. I truly didn't understand why I had to leave, but I said, All right, I'll take everything I bought with me. Once I agreed, my husband contentedly said, Get on with it then, and left. I immediately called a resale shop. My name is Emily. I currently live with my husband, Robert, who's five years my senior. Robert and I met when mutual friends introduced us, and we unexpectedly bumped into each other while hanging out with them. It naturally led to us spending a day off together. You know I'm actually thinking of becoming a voice actor. I'm studying for it now, Robert said. Listening to Robert, I thought his deep voice was indeed impressive. I've always had a soft spot for soothing voices, and I felt drawn to his. He probably sensed my interest. Soon, Robert and I exchanged contact information, suggesting we should hang out alone. With my agreement, before we knew it, we started dating. Neither of us explicitly said we should date, but we found ourselves in a relationship. Being young at the time, I thought, this must be what adult romance feels like. I had just graduated from college and started working, so maybe I was taken by the idea of dating someone who seemed so mature compared to me. Seeing this, my best friend Ashley expressed concern. Are you sure about dating someone five years older? I confidently replied, it's fine. Age gap relationships aren't that uncommon nowadays. I really like Robert and he feels the same about me. There's nothing to worry about. Seeing my conviction, even initially concerned Ashley said, Well, if you say so, Emily. Robert and I continued dating for about three years, and he eventually brought up marriage. Honestly, I'd mentioned him to my parents and the fact that he was five years older, so they were eager to meet him. Given this pressure, I often found myself wondering when he'd propose. He proposed to me during one of his usual visits to my apartment, where we just hang out and relax. Normally, I'd expect a proposal to happen in a more romantic setting, but this casual approach felt very much like Robert. I didn't mind it. In response to Robert's proposal, I said, sure, let's get married, so perhaps we were both a bit nonchalant about it. After that, we went to visit each other's parents, but to be honest, I didn't really get along with Robert's folks. When we arrived at Robert's family home, the entryway and living room were crammed with what looked like antiques, though I couldn't tell where they were from. But from what I could see, they all seemed to be replicas or imitation pieces. However, as we were ushered into the living room and met Robert's parents, both were dressed in high-end branded clothing and decked out in gaudy jewelry as they greeted me. It felt like I was meeting a stereotypical nouveau riche couple. No matter how I looked at it, our tastes and values seemed too different for us to get along. I thought. Robert's mother even looked at me and remarked, You look so average, don't you? Comparing her appearance to mine, which was quite rude. I was taken aback that the parents of the man I was thinking of marrying could be like this, but in the end, it's Robert and I who are getting married. If I don't get along with my future in-laws, then I don't really have to interact with them much, so I decided not to let it bother me too much. After Robert and I got married and moved into our condo to start our life together, after a while, Robert came to me looking a bit anxious. Hey, who was that woman in the blue dress among your guests at the wedding? Which woman in a blue dress? I asked. 
There were several of my guests who wore blue dresses, so just based on that information, I couldn't figure out who he was talking about. You know, the one who gave a speech as your best friend. Do you mean Ashley? Yes, she was wearing a blue dress. Upon hearing this, Robert muttered, so it was Ashley. What's wrong with Ashley? When I asked, he seemed visibly flustered. Oh, it's nothing major. The other day, when I was headed to work, I thought I saw someone who looked like her. That's when I remembered she had given a speech as your best friend at the wedding. I was puzzled at his sudden interest in Ashley and why he was so flustered, but he just chuckled and said, it's nothing really, and retreated to his room before I could ask anything further. A little while later, I got a call from my best friend Ashley with some news. Listen, Emily, my boyfriend's coming back to the U.S. next year. Actually, Ashley had been dating her boyfriend since high school. They'd known each other since elementary school, but he had moved away in middle school, and since then they had been writing letters to each other. By the time they got to high school, they were reunited, and that's when he confessed to her. I always felt content listening to Ashley's bittersweet love stories. I always enjoyed hearing about her love adventures and her boyfriend, after working for a few years at his company, got transferred to an international branch and had been away from the U.S. for some time. Despite the distance, their communication never faltered, and they remained a close-knit couple. Do you think he might propose once he's back and then you guys will get married? Oh, Emily, you're always so quick to jump to conclusions. Just make sure to invite me to the wedding. I promise I'll give a heartwarming speech. Of course, after that touching speech you gave at your wedding, I'll definitely need you to do the same for mine. Don't set the bar too high. We shared a laugh over our tea. We could talk about anything and everything, completely trusting one another. If one of us had a problem, the other would be there, always ready to offer a shoulder to lean on. And it was around this time that I started noticing Robert coming home later and later. Working late again today. Ah, uh, yeah, you think I shouldn't work or something? Even after getting married, Robert held on to his dream of becoming a voice actor. While studying for that career, he couldn't quite see the results and had to work part-time jobs to make ends meet. Yet all the money Robert made from his part-time jobs went straight to his voice acting classes, so I had to cover all our living expenses. That's why we couldn't really save up a shared savings. After a while being married, I realized Robert wasn't willing to give up on his dream for the sake of our family. I kept wondering if part-timers really had to work so much overtime. Robert's daily overtime added to my worries. Hey, haven't you been working too much lately? They shouldn't be making you do so much overtime, even if it's just a part-time job. I told you I'm fine. More money is always better. Just keep your opinions to yourself. By that time, Robert had stopped calling me by my name and just referred to me as you. When we got married, I genuinely believed he would speak to me more gently and frequently, but after our marriage, I ended up hearing harsh words from him most of the time. The once gentle and deep voice of Robert turned solely into a harsh one. He seemed to be drinking a lot, and sometimes his voice became raspy. Voice acting depends heavily on a healthy throat, so it worried me that Robert, who wanted to be a voice actor, wasn't taking care of his. But even that seemed to bother him. Slowly, he began to avoid talking to me and eventually would ignore me even when we crossed paths at home. That's when I got a call from Ashley. She said she had something to discuss, so I suggested we meet up since I had my own concerns. We decided to chat in a karaoke booth so that no one could overhear us. Ashley seemed very cautious and had specifically reserved a room where she could see the counter and staff from the door. You specifically chose this room? Yes, I wanted a spot where the staff could see if there was a suspicious person outside our door. A suspicious person? Is that related to what you wanted to discuss? At my words, Ashley nodded. She had felt like someone was following her ever since she left her job about a month ago. Now she even felt followed on her days off. 
The reason Ashley had chosen a room where the staff could easily see was that she thought the person stalking her might try to eavesdrop on our conversation. Did you talk to the police about it? I tried, but since there's no actual contact, they can't do much. What about your boyfriend? He's coming back in a month. I thought I'd discuss it with him too, but I wanted to first talk to you, someone close by. Ashley hadn't gotten a good look at her stalker because she was too scared, so she didn't know if it was a man or a woman. So I decided to stand at a distance and identify the person who was stalking Ashley, and through that I came to understand who was stalking Ashley. Although I couldn't discuss my rocky relationship with Robert in retrospect, maybe it was for the best, because the one following my best friend Ashley was none other than my husband, Robert. He would tell me he had to work overtime daily, but after finishing his shift, he would lurk near Ashley's workplace and tail her when she left. I couldn't believe that the person scaring Ashley was someone so close to me. When I found out I was beside myself, and the look on Robert's face when he was following Ashley was downright creepy. He had this sleazy, unsettling grin. I fell in love and married this man. The instant I saw his face was the moment the love that lasted for a century went cold. I told Ashley the truth and advised her to move immediately. With the help of her co-workers, she managed to have someone drive her close to her new place from the underground company parking lot for a while. After Ashley and I took these measures, Robert became increasingly frustrated, and one day that frustration exploded. My parents are gonna live here, so you should go back to your parents' house, Robert said suddenly. Yet Robert seemed convinced he was making perfect sense. Got a problem with that? If you oppose what I'm saying, I'm fine with divorcing you, he started. While I had many grievances with him and even thought that divorce might not be so bad, I didn't think he could just kick me out of our home. I'm the one paying $1,800 for our monthly expenses. I wonder if Robert even remembers that, I thought skeptically. When I looked at him skeptically, he lost his temper. Just get out already. My parents can't move in if you're still here. Why do I have to leave? I don't get it at all, but I said, fine, I'll take everything I bought with me. Seeing my agreement, Robert said, just hurry up and walked away. I immediately contacted a local buyback service. The next day, the buyback service came to our apartment. At first, Robert smirked, thinking I was moving out, but when he saw the workers assessing all the furniture and appliances, his eyes widened in shock. After they had finished evaluating everything except what was in Robert's room, a staff member handed me a quote, saying, the total value is $22,000. I promptly signed, saying, all right, sell it all. Robert, coming back to his senses, grabbed my arm. Wait, why are you selling everything? My parents are gonna live here. How can they with no furniture? I shook off his grip. What are you talking about? When we got married, you said you were broke because you were paying for your acting classes. You begged me to handle the rent, furniture, and living expenses. I never imagined you were that broke. I felt deceived. Remember the $1,800 monthly expenses I've been covering. From now on, you'll pay that. And with your parents moving in, I bet it'll be even more, I stated firmly. Robert went pale but he quickly tried to regain his composure. Thought you could talk about money and I'd cancel the divorce. Who do you think you are? I've already gotten close to a rich lady, Robert said, and then I remembered Robert following Ashley recently. If what he considers close was his stalker behavior, then Robert is seriously deluded. Ashley definitely comes from a wealthy family. Her grandfather was a businessman and now her father has taken over. Ashley truly is the perfect Harris, but she doesn't flaunt it. She spends just like me and our friends, and no one judges her based on her family's wealth. However, Robert seemed to have learned about my best friend Ashley's wealthy background and decided she'd be a better match. Could he possibly think that if two people are the same age, the wealthier one is better? 
That infuriates me, but Ashley would never marry Robert. Ashley's boyfriend, whom she's been dating since high school, is coming back to the state soon. They'll likely get married, I remarked. Upon hearing he wasn't close with Ashley and that she found him creepy, Robert was floored. I always escorted Ashley home, Robert insisted. You're lucky you weren't reported to the cops, I shot back. But I didn't know about any boyfriend, he's been abroad. She'd choose me over some unknown guy, Robert insisted. They've been pen pals since elementary school and apparently talk almost daily. And unlike you, who's only been working part-time jobs, her boyfriend is a successful man recognized even by her father, I stated firmly. Robert looked utterly defeated as I spoke. When the buyback workers had taken all the furniture and appliances, he seemed to recover somewhat. Guess you are all I have. You'll support my dream of becoming a voice actor forever, right? He asked, striking a pose. I gave him a cold look and said, excuse me, I've already been to the divorce lawyer's office and started the process. Let's communicate through our attorneys from now on. Robert, perhaps thinking I still had feelings for him, clung to my waist. Don't say things like that. Haven't we been getting along all this time? Getting along? When? Ever since you found out my best friend Ashley is a wealthy Harris, you've been cold to me and started hanging around her. Right after I married you, I realized it was a mistake, I declared. Robert started crying like a little boy, even though he's five years older than me. Seeing him cry like a child only made my already dwindling affection for him drop even further. At this point, I can't stand being in the same room with him. Just cut it out. Oh, by the way, I told your uncle who's letting us rent this apartment about our divorce, I continued. My uncle? You know he's strict, right? Robert exclaimed. Well, I've been paying all the rent and living expenses until now. So when I told him you might not be able to afford it if I leave, he said he'd make you work for him. That means I won't be able to continue my voice acting studies, I explained. You hardly ever practice anyways. Maybe it's time to face reality. Anyway, if you come here, Ashley, again, I'll report you to the police immediately. Goodbye, I said firmly. I left the house determined to never look back. I plan to return to my parents' house for now, but I'm thinking of moving closer to my job if I find a good place. As for Robert, it seems his uncle kept his word and made Robert work at his company. Soon after, Robert's parents, who had been planning to leech off their son after he married the wealthy Harris, also moved into the apartment. They too were taken to work at the uncle's company. Seems like the whole family had a habit of taking advantage of others. I'm just glad I was able to get away from such a toxic family. Age difference doesn't really matter, but I think I need to choose my next partner more carefully. On another note, after things with Robert settled, I received a wedding invitation from Ashley herself. She introduced me to her longtime boyfriend, and I truly wish them all the best. My first marriage didn't work out, but I hope Ashley's marriage will last for many years to come.